ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁን መከታተል ትችላላችሁ ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢኒሲቲት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለው የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ልምድ ባላችሁ መምህራን እየተማራ ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁት አይነት በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ ከናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ let me in so uh, still some students are waiting i have to admit them Now I think it will be enough to 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 wait some uh in waiting some we can we can proceed with our uh, our today's lecture well uh Uh, as he told me in the beginning uh, questions that I asked I appreciate that you all know on which chapter you are so today we will begin with chapter 4 chapter 4 so it was on the third or on the second material that I shared you in uh, PDF uh again welcome to one of the most fascinating courses in business and management studies which is called international business strategies or global business strategies uh so i don't want to limit you to be just simple international but you need to be global because that should be the maximum stage that a business can be yeah neither transnational nor multinational but global so chapter 6 chapter 6 is all about global global production and supply chain management global production and supply chain management i hope you know these terms A global production is you know the conversion of inputs to given level of output with a certain standardized nature of the products that are required by users or call them customers however these days again this word or this phrase is uh, improved to be global operations because the term or the discipline production management is now many universities whether it is in europe or america are revisiting it to be global operations not global production but it's already we are on the verge of uh, modifying that global operation global production so production management versus operations management i hope you know there are differences and similarities normally production management is mainly focused on the conversion of inputs to outputs in the context of manufacturing i mean mainly in the manufacturing industries or in the manufacturing case operations management is somehow broader in concept con compared to production management because operations also include the service dimension as well as the manufacturing dimension so it's better to be more inclusive more inclusive means operations management so when we are really considering services especially we better say service production not really awkward it's not it's not really a common sense is a common term so we better say service operations management so operations management is somehow a bit broader so i should tell you that things are really evolved from time to time next year maybe we will say it like global operations management i know national aviation college is really very dynamic in terms of uh, 
uh, really listening we instructors so definitely to, but when we are really thinking that consider it like global operations or global productions management and and the supply chain management you know when we produce you need inputs yes after production you supply the materials to the market to the, the to the middlemen or to the sellers or to the buyers and then you can uh, maybe they may be ultimate cons ultimate consumer groups or even those which are considered as middlemen middlemen like it can be like wholesaler it can be agent or it can be parent or partner company like that so when you say supply supply of what mainly supply of the inputs that are really required to conduct the production system or supply of the finalized commodities to the relevant users these users could be either end users or users in between let's say the wholesaler is a user of course and then it will sell it to the retailer or it may sell it even sometimes to the final so that is really a one of the most toughest concept in the world global production and supply chain management that should be well managed so because it has a number of uh, cost related uh, uh, components and cost is highly related with the success stories of a number of companies so the efficiency both in the production and supply chain contributes for the success of a company in the end this is really what we want to see but remember you master students you are really in, 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 in a place to read and even sometimes understand. So mainly chapter four is like a kind of question and answer because uh, sometimes you better make it like a question and answer because there is no hard and uh, fast, hard, fast and it has and a really hard, hard uh, issue on, on this. Regard. It's not difficult, I mean, therefore, I may be a bit faster on this one. So you can read it, you can get it from the that leading text material, and then I may uh, proceed to the next chapter. So anyway, global business, we defined it in chapter one, or international international business, or global business means we said it two, two broad categories of business. That means internationalization of production and, or, and internationalization of marketing, or, Global business is all about globalization of production and globalization of marketing. So we are taking production here on the marketing component. We are really touching also supply, supply side. So remember, this is one thing that you can see in the as an introduction. In today's global economy, first companies must decide where the five WH questions mostly, where to locate productive activities, where to locate really in the industries, for example, forget the international business and you can think of the domestic business. How appropriate is the location of industries? You can check, recheck and even re-examine, for instance, Ethiopia's industrial park locations. How appropriate are really the park locations? how they can be, how location factors are really enabling to conduct international business. At least we should have some, some sort of competitive or comparative advantage in terms of location. So location is a very, very important thing. That's why we are worrying for logistics. So the other thing is firms or business must decide, firms must decide what the long-term strategic role of foreign production sites be foreign means international business the company may be some country x and it may have another production wing in camp anyway the case of boeing for instance assembling some of the parts and bringing to us and before assembling they may produce somewhere so these are some of the decisions we call them industrial location decision by the way this is really one of the most advanced issue in industrial industry management or in production management. If you have time, please read about uh, the theory of industrial location. There is really intense calculation and a number of 
algorithms and then uh, maximization, minimization issues. So if you have time, I really urge you to read about the theory of industrial location or the theory of locating in this locative location competitiveness for industries. So whether to own a foreign production or really to outsource it or how to manage a globally dispersed supply chain what are the role of, like for instance, information-based technology, uh, marketing or management or global production system, even logistics? Really, whether to manage global logistics or to outsource it, which one is like that? So these are the key important issues that companies are really um, in, 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 in challenge to decide about international business. This is what you call direct loan direct, it means all about global production and supply chain management. So that's really an easy decision. Anyway, let's start some some kind of, I, I, I follow a different style for the, first, the, for the first chapter, because it's really a simple chapter, but it's the most interesting chapter as well. Please read it from the text. No, even if I say it's simple, but still there are some tricky questions that you can get while you are reading it. The issue is decision. Yeah, production decision, supply chain management decision. This decision is normally consists of strategies, the terms of production and the issues of logistics or matters related logistics. So let's say one important question that really asked by a number of international companies is how can production and logistics be conducted internationally? Yeah? How can, because as much as they are really concerned with costs, this production and logistics can be conducted in consideration of what? In consideration of what? Lowering, in consideration of lowering costs, let's say, I am admitting students. How can production and logistics can be conducted globally or internationally? to lower the costs of the value creation. Value is an advantage, for example. You may purchase a certain, let's say, H&M T-shirt that's developed or a really highly branded T-shirt, let's say. And then you have some value and let's say you can really pay $10 or $12. And then if you say, I am paying $10 for this T-shirt, it means the value of your $10 is a bit lower than the value that you are presuming to get from that t-shirt. This is value means advantage, benefits. So always when we are thinking about logistics, it's all about value creation. So that's why you are saying value chain. Every transaction across the whole product supply, there need to be some kind of value. If there are some exchange, from the producer to the seller to the to the, the wholesaler, if from the wholesaler to the retailer, I know they are really what they are really exchanging uh, the products. But when this exchange is accomplished, there need to be some additional value. For example, the producer may be in Germany, the wholesaler may be let's say in Dubai, and then the retailer may be in Djibouti or Addis, and the buyer may be in Jima. So the buyer cannot go to Germany or cannot go to Dubai to the wholesaler or cannot go to the retailer to Djibouti or Addis. So he, it, he needs or the buyer needs the product to be in Jima. So that is value. Value of what? Value of not going to the production side. That's what you call it, the value creation or convenience addition in the product supply chain. So lowering the costs of value creation and add value by better serving the customer. This is a key issue, by the way. This is a fundamental issue in supply chain management, whether it's an international relations course, I mean, whether it's international business course or it's our production course, or even supply chain course. So anyway, these are, this is a key issue that we need to answer. So the answer really needs to, First, see production and first look what's logistics. When you say production, production really involves the creation of a product. 
once the product is created, still what we are saying, we can still add value. For example, the first addition is just in terms of packaging, or the first addition is in terms of providing informative packaging system, or the first or the second uh, value could be transporting the product to the convenience location to the buyer. So production plus logistics, it will give us some kind of value creation to supply to the users or to the customers. Anyway, the strategy of the chief of the production and logistic function are lowering costs. So you need to say that lowering costs and increasing product quality. Quality means, you know, quality is really subjective, but really in production management, quality is simply fitness for purpose, fitness for it. So you can increase the, the, the level of fitness of the product, maybe on timely basis. So there are some important five or six dimensions of quality, but this can be increased by eliminating some defective products from both the supply chain, even during the manufacturing process. Therefore, even if these two objectives are really look, some, look separated or identical, they are highly intervened or interrelated. In order to lower costs, sometimes we may compromise some of the issues we are really eliminating some defectives, or when you have some larger amount of defectives, then that will not be sold. If that will not be sold, then the cost will be even not lower rather than high. So these two objectives are really highly inter interrelated. So if I ask you what are really the objectives of production and logistics function, definitely you them. Therefore, we better really focus on quality control functions that help the companies reduce costs. You know, the traditional assumption among a number of international business managers is that better quality control requires a lot of cost. Of course, in the beginning, it requires cost. Quality checking systems, the establishment of quality control systems Initially, they may require some sort of investment, but later they can really contribute to reduce costs significantly, okay? Because time will not be wasted during the manufacturing, especially in terms of getting poor quality products, because some of the materials or some of the raw materials or the inputs will be, uh, they will be controlled before. If not, the other, come, the other challenge may come. So if there is what you call it, the GIGO concept, the GIGO means the garbage in, the garbage out concept. So if garbage is in, then definitely garbage is out. So input quality, this quality control really begins from the, the input or the input supply side or from the selection of supplies. Plus, Quality control also help to really minimize rework and scrap costs. Rework and repetitive tasks will be really reduced thanks for better quality control and even some warranty costs and there may be time used to fix uh, defective uh, products at lower cost. So this, so this is the first thing that I want to elaborate. So the next important question in production or I can say in global production and supply chain course is that or chapter is that what management tool is used to increase the reliability of product offerings? One, one important thing is the issue of reliability. It's not only cost, you know. So there are a number of options. You know, the, the issue of Kaizen issue, the Six Sigma quality issue. Read about this. I don't want to enter into this. You know, you are masters. students definitely. I really believe on you, or I really count on you that you can really, really read on this one. So for example, the Six Sigma quality improvement program normally aims to reduce defects. It boosts productivity, even eliminate waste, and it also helps to cut throughout the company. This is one option, but there are a number of options that management can really increase the reliability of uh, products and production supply. Definitely, it is actually, uh, an, evol an evolved outcome of the Tiki Web. Tiki Web means it's somehow a relatively older concept compared to Six Sigma, the total quality management issue. So application of total quality management now, and then even application of the Six Sigma across the production 
and supply chain management systems can help companies to really ensure what really ensure reliability of products uh, offering. So you can see that there are a number of standards across countries or regions such as the European Union, ISO 9000, 9008, 9000 like that. So there are important objectives. So related to this, related to product offering is there are two important objectives that you can easily read and understand. So the first important question related to the 5WH question is the question of where. Where should production be the, the other things are really such as paribus, you can consider uh, uh, many things constant. Anyway, in order to decide the location, as I said it, please, if you have time, read about um, the, the, the theory of the uh, location. Anyway, for this purpose, we can really answer like this. Before deciding where to locate production facilities or systems, consider related factors. So some some colleagues really didn't mute. So uh, okay. there are some important country related factors should be considered. The country macro level policies, available. Incentives available for different producers or among different or within different countries. You can read that. The other thing is the technological related factors. Technology means how the factors of production are really combined. For example, you can have land and labor. The first in the backward system is just you can simply use your hand, but you can have a number of options to to relate land with labor. In between the land and the labor, you can think of some important technological outputs or measures. That's what we call it technological factors and even product factors. For example, the product users, they may have different preferences or um, seasons that they are really doing the product. So these are the factors that need to be under country related factors. We can mention hundreds of factors. By it. Technological factors like that product. When you say normally technological factors, especially from global perspective, technology means two things. One, the suitability of the suitability of production to the, uh, the the expected level of technology. The other thing is the carrying capacity of that location to use that technology. For example, some technologies may require high amount of energy. So if the country do not have adequate supply of energy, then the, the carrying capacity for that technology is not low. No. So that's really, we can, we can see from that. Country related factors, what are they? For instance, like the political, the cultural, and even some relative cost factors, even some important regulations related to trade and foreign direct investment, and the issue of uh, exchange rates, and then even technological factors, like the level of fixed costs involved in that technology, and then the minimum expected level of uh, efficiency in that, in that location. So the flexibility of the technology especially is very, very important, how flexible the technology, the technology is there. Normally, uh, in the international business, especially from production perspective, what you can see is two, two types of production. One is the standardized production system, and the second one is a customized production system. International businesses may apply the standardized production system because of what? Because they may have huge volume of buyers or customers without much purchasing power capacity or purchasing power parity or without significant difference in terms of preference. During that time, they are really working for mass production. But this mass production requires high level of standardization. So standardized products require what? Mass production. On the other hand is Customers may have variety of interests, but still they may have better purchasing power. In this case, the company may proceed to not standardized production, but customized production. Please remember that one. But there is a third one. 
you can really work for mass production, but still working for customization. We call it mass customization because from country to country, you can have some variation, but within that country, again, you can have some bigger amount of demand. So that's what we call it really a, a mass customization. So flexibility is a very important question. What are the technological factors? You can really read this. It's not such a, a huge uh, issue. Product related factors, we can really classify them into two. The product's value to weight ratio. The product's value to weight ratio means, oh, that's really a very, very important concept. If the weight to weight ratio is high, produce the product in a single location and export it. It means what? Weight to weight ratio means, weight to weight means what? If the weight of, if the weight of final product divided to uh, to its uh, input if it's greater than one or closer to one so that's that production system is what we call it input oriented production so input oriented production requires what input oriented production requires larger amount of input so it's very bulky to transport the input for example cement industries sugar industries and then some mineral industries like gypsum industries or like that even wood factories they have somehow uh, they are really input intensive industries so the location of the manufacturing company is closer to what closer to the input source the other one is if the ratio of final products divided to the input is much lower than one. It means like that. If, for example, from below like 0 0.8 or like that, that production is output oriented production. Therefore, the company can manufacture the product in multiple locations. That's what we call it output factor location. The second important thing is whether the product service universal needs so if that product really uh, tries to fulfill some universal needs it means the need for local responsiveness is reduced for products that do which increases the attractiveness of concentrated manufacturing so sometimes we may work with this one there are a number of examples by the way for this on the textbook you can really read that locating production facilities in a way there are some important strategies for locating production facilities one is the concentrated location and then the decentralized location you can really a thesis from location strategy and production for example concentration production favored and then decentralized production favored some country related factors are here technology related factors are here product related factors are here so we can really uh, have a match with these important variables. For example, difference in political economy and then constant production, really it favors substantial, but it's not that much in the case of decentralized product. Please see it that way. So there are there is also another important uh, uh, question that does, does the rationale for establishing a foreign production facility change? Sometimes the justification to establish a foreign production facility may change because of what because of various factors that you can really for instance government regulations or a factory may initially have an establishment to make a standard product service to a local market and later it may evolve into another advanced design or capabilities and it may transfer or it may really outsource it so there are some important issues that we need to really to think of especially when some products are really produced by a number of companies like assembling some parts or getting that assembly or that spare part from one company and adding its inputs to uh, by the mother company and then selling to another organization or international countries it may require one important decision what you call it the make or buy decision maybe the company may make 60 percent of the products and then the remaining 40 percent of the product may be purchased but it, this is depend on informed decisions. That decision is what we call it the MB decision or the make or buy decision, or we call it the MOB 
this issue. So I think you can read it. That's really the advantages of making like that and the advantages of the advantages of making or the advantages of buying is the advantages of uh, buying are there. There one thing that you need to really uh, focus is that there are important trade-offs. Sometimes there is a trade-off means there is uh, uh, there is a need to balance between uh, making and buying. So the decision that we can make or buy may have some sort of commensuration. So we need to really appreciate that some trade-off. But these trade-off decisions should be made based on some objective functions and available or well identified constraint or objective constraints. So the benefits of manufacturing components, especially in-house, are greater, especially in-house production, rather than really buying them, especially some highly important or decisive product components are advisable to be produced by the company per se. So it's greater, especially when highly specialized estates are already available in the company, if the company is better in terms of having better technology and facilities, it's better to make the product. When there is a vertical integration is necessary for protecting proprietary technology, vertical integration, um, I mean vertical integration, um, for instance, the company is really producing, let's say 70% of the product, and it may supply to another company, which may add 20%, so 90% is the remaining 10% of it. This is what for the vertical integration. But imagine 60% is already produced by the original company, but the remaining 40% are other two companies. Why not the original company controls the whole thing? So that's really what you call it vertical integration. It means better control of the whole production value chain is what you call it vertical integration. Normally, this vertical integration is classified in two parts. One is what you call it the forward integration, and the second one is the backward integration. Even when producing the product because of low quality of inputs, the company may have the danger of gigo. Gigo means garbage in its garbage. So the company's management or the business management, the business management may decide to control the input I mean controlling uh, the other thing is forward integration forward integration means the company may engage just simply on the production but because of some marketing problems by sales agents or by distributors the products may be, or the company may face some challenge, like some cheating. Assume the product is being sold with $10 from the company, but some distributors may say 20 or even excessive profit may, may be expected from them. So in this case, the company may interfere and will start to supply the, its products by itself. This is what we call it, forward integration. Forward integration is more towards the control of the marketing system from production and up to the, uh, the, the buyer, or whereas backward integration is controlling back to the input side. So this together, we call it vertical integration, especially in terms of protecting not only proprietary technology, but also protecting uh, customer rights and then ensuring quality. Customer rights means protecting customers from high exploitation of fair price. In order to do all these things, sometimes companies may alone may not engage, may not be perfect in terms of doing every product by themselves. So strategic alliance may be really an option. Companies may engage in strategic alliance. Strategic alliance with suppliers, for example, suppliers of raw materials so that you can have sustainable what sustainable supply plus well defined pricing system so you cannot change your your costing strategy based on every change that the input supplier is doing so this will help you to protect backfires so that's a very important thing to ensure your global supply chain. So managing global supply chain, why logistics is important to the international form? Because supply chain is all about logistics. I think 
it's really a rudimentary thing to ask you about why logistics is important. So the question of efficiency is really very, very important because we are talking about global. Global means the involvement of huge distance, a number of months and days travel across the sea. Some of you who have uh, uh, like uh, staff who are involving in Ethiopian ships, for example, they really spend a huge amount of time on this. That's really one. Even the issue of exchange rate fluctuations, custom barriers, all this, they really need to be properly managed in the context of bringing efficiency to the company's product chain. So there is one important philosophy that you need to do, especially in terms of relay, or to avoid cost-related challenges that call it the JIT concept. JIT means just in time. Please read, this is also one technology. I mean, one not technology, it's one approach which tries to economize on inventory holding costs. Inventory holding costs or carrying costs, we call it, or product or material carrying costs. By the way, those of you who are from management background, you can remember a course which is called materials management. We should not have excessive inventory. We should not have also below standard level of inventories. When you say inventory, it includes three things. Countants, I think you can remember. Inventory means one, raw material, second, finished good, and third, work in process. Neither raw material nor finished good. So we should, we should not have bigger amount of inventory. We mean, we should have what? Somehow economical, what you call it, the EOQ concept. EOQ means economic order quantity. Economic order quantity of what? Quantity of raw materials. Economic order quantity means quantity of finished goods. Economy of order quantity means quantity of the work in process. Means work in process means those who are in between semi-processed items. Some companies will be in problem. They will have huge amount of inventory and even the storage costs, the storage rent rental cost even sometimes is really high. When you talk about the holding cost or the storage cost, we can have direct costing and indirect costing. Direct costing means, what's that? Every inventory has cash on it, is that not? So our cash will be, will be highly tied up or the business's cash will be highly tied with the material. This is one cost. So the other direct cost is the cost of cost of space or let's say cost of packaging or cost of what you call it protecting them from um, damage or like that so in like I said what we do is JIT or just in time or when you see it from manufacturing perspective we call it EOQ. EOQ means economic order quantity that's a very important approach that company and it has some really intensive calculation I don't want to interpret that that's really not part of also the, the curriculum of the course, but Steve, you can read more on this one. Uh, the role of what will be the role of the technology on global supply chain? I am sure if I ask you this, you can write even more than my notes, like electronic data interchange systems. You can see a lot, a lot. And really I, can, I cannot really uh, spend mentioning all these things on this one. So please read this one. I think chapter four is all about this. And then you need to really like classroom performance system. Anyway, I don't want to just engage much on this one. Chapter four is a very important subject that can have a significant implication, both in terms of cost and in terms of meeting product demand at global scale. So this is, this is all about በተመረጥ ከፍ ብሎ መብረር ይቻላል ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይ ስህት ኩባንያ ከከፍተኛ ትምርት አግባብነትና ጥራት ኤጀንሲ ሙሉ ቀናን ባገኘንባቸው በማስተርስ ዲግሪ MBA በስትራቴጂክ MBA ማኔጅመንት MBA በባንኪንግና ፋይናንስ MBA በቢዝነስ ሊደርሺፕ MBA በሪስክና ኢንሹራንስ MSc በኢንተርናሽናል ትሬድና ኢኮኖሚክስ ዘርፎች በእውቀት ለመቅረጽ የበቁ ፕሮፌሰሮቻችን አረንጓዴ መብራታቸውን አብርተዋል በነገራችን ላይ በኬንያ ሀገር ከሚገኙ ስመጥር ዩኒቨርሲቲዎች በሚመጡ ፕሮፌሰሮች የትኩረት መስክ ትምርቶቹ መሰጣታቸው ልዩ ያደርገናል 
በመርጥ የትምርት ስርዓት የተገነባው ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ በመጀመሪያ ዲግሪ በአቪዬሽን ማኔጅመንት በሆቴል ማኔጅመንት በአካውንቲንግ እና ፋይናንስ በማርኬቲንግ ማኔጅመንት አስተማማኝ ትምርት ይገብዩና ራስዎንና ሀገሩን ይለውጡ አድራሻ 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስዶ መንገድ ላይ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ ስህት ኩባንያ ህልሞን አሁን ያደርጋል ሚስተር ተለፈ ካሊጎ ኩዌስቲን ኦኬ Okay thank you doctor uh, before we proceed to uh, chapter 5 i have one questions uh, on yeah. uh, just in time uh, system yeah the uh, the inventory system yeah uh, in our uh, i think just in uh, system is practiced in uh, Toyota, Toyota manufacturing company Yeah and my question is is it possible in our country uh, because of the uh, transportations as well as the availability of raw material and the locations of our country can we get just in time can we wait for a, a raw material to produce uh, or what the practices show or which one is preferable for our country just in time or uh, having a raw material a raw material uh, in lots or which one for example the uh, inflation may affect our uh, raw material or purchasing yeah. so your uh, i want your advice and what's it's the practice of our country to now thank you thank you very much it's really a very nice question by the way Uh, it's a very nice it's a fundamental question especially for developing countries especially for those countries where ነበር <laughs> 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 very good እንደገና እንደገና እንትላለሁ በጣም ጥሩ ጥያቄ እንደሆነ ነው እኔ የተገነዘቡት በጣም ጥሩ ጥያቄ ነው የሚጠየቅም ጥያቄ ነው like applicability of just in time so one thing that we have to really understand is that just in time will not be implemented just in one day or in two days whatever it is a process by the way the first thing that you have to understand is it is a process the When you say it's a process it means it has steps so the first step to introduce just in time is to bring attitudinal change we can do it so this, this is the first thing so why we say we can do it just simple lo mafakkar bicha sayo on which areas can we really introduce jits there are some controllable and uncontrollable factors for just in time by the way so the advisors for the the consultants on this area what they really suggest is that please try to identify some of the controllable factors that you can implement or that you can apply in just in time on one hand and list the non controllable factors on the other hand 
For example, if the non-controllable factor is time, you may say, in how much time do you get the product or the input? I am not sure because we are far from Germany, you may say. So what will be the, the expectation, I'm asking you? Let's say from 20 to 40 days, before, just in time will advise you to use the maximum day and then to consider it for your calculation with other manageable factors. So we can really uh, think of that. So the question is really important. So think of that just in time is not only the issue of calculating and introducing some managerial tasks, but it's also an attitude. It's also a philosophy that everything that we require should be available in just when we are really requiring it. First, try to really get convinced of this one. Then try to identify what are the, the challenges not to implement this, what are the enabling factors that to be. And then through process, you will arrive at, at perfect just in time, by the way. When you talk about just in time, it's not like the name just, remember. There are some errors, what you call it, production function errors. Even Carl knows that another sentence Katasara, that we can call it like just in time. Please, if, you, if you're really interested, I can simply just in time techniques and methodologies. I will, I will uh, uh, send to that. So, uh, in, in the context of Ethiopia and in the context of many countries, I know this is a challenge, but still, Delay answering being or challenging being, being you know, just in time advising my government no. Delay answering has to calculate our go. Challenge you think I'm just going to calculate our go. We go back go. Kiss our house to my lad go back to Chilala. So let's just in time inform the owner production and supply chain management decision and the narrative. So let me take man, but I'm consider our go or the practice no matter what we move car to no. And then. Normally, that's the question of uh, management and considering factors. Even, if, for example, you raised uh, uh, the issue of inflation. Even the issue of inflation, you, you have to forecast inflation. And there is what you call it uncertainty calculation. And all this calculation will be entered into that situation. And based on that, is, you know. Is that any, any question? Uh, Thank Gensel? you, doctor. Thank you. I, understand. I can send you materials. Uh, the next question from uh, who is LG Style 03? Uh, uh, please go ahead. I hope you are referring to me. What is your name, please? My name is Ashanafi. Okay, Mr. Ashanafi, carry on. I would like to add on what uh, Tarifa said. Yes. <clears throat> From my point of view, it's, it's not practical to implement JIT in our context. Yeah. So it might be important to uh, think that uh, we may have different uh, approach to different uh, sectors, industries, manufacturing yeah. uh, companies. But in the absence of an efficient supply chain management system, yeah, I don't think it works. Yeah, that's what he called it. You know, when I say uh, JIT, tackle uh, the bottleneck area. You know, the first thing is what I am really pushing is that we can do it. A multi philosophy is on the Just in time, of course, you can see how the transportation challenge the port issue, all these things. Okay? Just, just in time is a philosophy that I will not have excessive raw materials before production, and I will not have excessive products after production in philosophy. It's nothing, okay? So... What is the basic no, assumption behind That's the question. Yeah, you know, and no, um, uh, You're not saying no. that we will not have uh, excessive no. supplies in stock? We are yeah. assuming that we will get all the inputs that we need. Yeah. The specified time that we want it to have. Exactly. So the basic you know assumption the behind it. Uh, sorry, sorry. No problem, please. Charles, go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm done. No point in the Ashanapi, by the way. Okay, have you finished? Yes, sir. Uh, economic order quantity allow once we know the average demand size 
determining the average outflow amount by the way kemenga hedar masalachu yebwanbwanwa kandu gamzto wede distribute dem yaka lemsale incoming na outgoing wem demo incoming gun ka outgoing ga balance maragno selezi outgoing gun ka wogen no selezi lay men sara minjira outgoing means finally produced other gun market reset of minjira product if we are really getting that amount definitely we know how much to produce and if you know how much to produce and when definitely we can know how much input we require if we know how much input we require and if you know where the inputs are coming from by adding some level of uncertainty we can really determine the amount of time that requires to supply raw material please this is what we call it a backward production movement backward production movement means always begin with what you can say this is a very important concept many allow the shit to chill this what we call it the the one that you cannot the lot and based on that you can have you can add some sort of safety let's say uh, 5% some companies they may have 10% safety margin means stock out the casto out of stock the casto can be number of complaints coming that way if they have some level of x amount of production and then on that x amount of production they may add a concept is called the safety stock safety stock means like 5% of the already produced and then in order to arrive that as i said it is repeatedly saying it how much things should be reproduced and when to produce by the way this is really possible and don milingarachu bani assumption just in time la metagwar metagal yallebn inyan mekniyatu we have a lot of other costs other burden just in time kegimut ust asgebtel yemna marte kohona የባሰ የማና ማለት ከሆነ የባሰ ብዙ ካላስተብናቸው ቻሌንጅስ ሁሉ እንገባለን ማለት ነው። You know what I mean? በጣም uncontrollable factors in ከግምት አገብስ አስገብተን ማና ማለት ከሆነ international business ላይ fail እናረከበት አንዱ ነገር ባይዞ ይሄ ነው። ምክንያቱም first we will not have adequate evidence that how much will be sold in the market. Second by guessing you know me though there should not be any guessing in international business. even if high risk yallebet amount in bion yanen risk awqen calculate argen kawatan bicha no wede production min nero this is what call it the just in time or the just in time production concept okay but remember uh, it's not like the name just just is not just yeah? it's it's the issue of what the issue of objective or evidence based operations management the nothing okay just let the wallet may not be fast anyway but man allegen compromise may adergo just in time and no scraps betechala matan scraps wastage stock out and overstock i kasat betechala matan mat aun etopia ga na abzanyo developing country ust yallo ye hulu hoarding minamenko abzanyo also abzanyo ti businessoch bezi ayinet philosophy ust bigebu yeah of course uh, we know that how many of uh, the imports and exports are in ethiopia is dominated by how many people i can tell you just only less than 10 people that really dominated the import market i know that and i can give you the product the list however if that is open if that is much uh, competitive and if everybody knows how much time it will take to input material or to import material from china or from let's say um Turkey to Ethiopia or like that, and if you make it open and very competitive, definitely many comes to the competition. If many comes to the competition, definitely lowering of prices to the final consumer. That's why, as we and nagar ni hulim challenge maraga chuna gara. Things are unpredictable. Me onut batat nagar garoch. Ye import export sector, but am but eat. እንደምን ይባሉ ባላት የሚባሉ አጭበርባሪዎች ስለሚያስ ብቻ ነው ይሄ እኔ ቢሊፍ ነው አይ ቢሊቭ ኦን ዚስ ኖት ኦንሊ ዚስ ይሄ ብቻ ሳይሆን እነዚህ ለይባ ባላሀብትን ብሎ ኢምፖርት ኤክስፖርት የሚያደርጉት እንደግሞ ገቨርመንት ሰፖርት ያደርጋቸዋል ቢኮዝ አይ ዶንት ኖ ሜቢ ሂ ሜ ኢት ሜ ኖት ሃቭ ኦፕሽን ላይክ ዛት ዚስ ኖት ኦንሊ ኢን ኢትዮጵያ ባይ ዘይ ኢትስ ቬሪ ኮመን ሶ አንለስ ኢን አዘር ዋይስ ዊ አር ሜኪንግ ዘ ኤክስፖርት ኤንድ ኢምፖርት ሴክተር ቬሪ ማች ትራንስፓረንት the introduction of it is nonsense it's impossible that's what uh, i want to say
Any other question? Oh, is that uh, data? Do you want to help me? Or do you want to again ask me another question? <laughs> yes, uh, Doctor, I have uh, some questions. Uh, uh, okay, my question is uh, related to uh, the production process and uh, as well as uh, to the supply chain process for uh, our case, for example. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, in chapter four, as a beginning, uh, there are two types. Uh, the first is global production. It is the one. Uh, it has its own processes like global production process, the reworkers, the scrappers, as well as the production process management. And the second part is the global supply chain part. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, as you like, the government is now. Let me say, by by the good, if you are like yellow, your production process is like efficient. Now, show product. Show back by one of my methods. Are you working? Show minimum now. You meet at a come watch your technology. Full of negar state of the art. Now, at the same time, now the agarot. Let me say, by the agarot, but the agarot, African Muslim in Chile, then in that case. Uh, resource indumentation high no. Nagar gan ye supply process achen uh, supply chain lay av adi man nagar gila chowaliu yas mar rachwal. Lam sare kama tu bhala import kader ragu bhala raw materials for production for indirect investment lay ye ye te samaru balhab toch gumruk lay lera jim gize iko ya lakshuli erasu hone process allo zay mifat ne bet nagar gan khali lo chwa garans arsitai jig bet amzik katanya level lay no yalla no. Exactly. So, our Benyager context, but I'm zoom at the notch in our own, but I'm yet a year of material women of actual. And as yeah, uh, and then pushing factor behind when Mode gave you a lemon about would be fell the good nabi at all. Yeah, global international, uh, yeah, supply chain process when create him another go value. But I'm in the known that no improve him another go. Benya context ragmo, ya lulu chagaruch. Allo it room salem yon un bachar yeg dino ahun the world becomes too dynamic but I'm dynamic hon one bzuna garoch but technology tada gifo no intena yaro allo tka communication process acho jamro but I'm is a man and ona lenya tika it room salem yon un bachar gize wo the world market tla magvat and now ko nya import tla yon highly intena man lo export ana dergam and the fact that as he man alba as he global am na mer tacho mer touch globally compete me ader gulai honu chila lu kazi garam me logistics aspect wem international global lo enten supply chain management tacho nem poor no kazi kalam be deraja bans kalam te karara bi wohone deraja le mehir min bin da ader gino bata chale fitnat wode alam akapawi gebia wem international business lai yem ngeba wu balila te yake ba mina yena te business strategy bin te kamno. Achar shalu doctor, thara zama masale. It is a it is an annual problem. It's a very good question. It's a big question. This is really one of the issues that we'll deal with. I hope chapter six. Definitely, based on data, based on evidence, while the forms that you have brought, like ease of doing business reports, I'm sorry, ranking actually in terms of custom clearance, whatever, whatever, and the whole value chain like. Yalu mana coach finally contribute to Arabu to Nagaland. And then, what is the best practice? And whose country is best practice? A band which I don't know. Any animal similar to Nazila? My answer is to really significantly improve the POP. What is the POP? The POP means improving the business operating environment is a solution. There is no one answer for this. Get out. I'm sorry. Improving the business operating environment. The business operating environment. What I call it? Can't you say that? In the garage, like competitive to no one chino. Especially our our enterprises. Business operating environment. Manal. We have the structural. The what you call it? The the legal environment. I will tell you. We have the institutional environment. We have the infrastructural environment. We have the custom and whatever class environment. So. The answer for you is improving the business operating environment in general can really help us boost the, the import uh, and then the, the, what you call it, the global supply chain process. 
improve your life. So what is this? That's a big topic, by the way. How to improve a country's business operating environment? The pestle analysis, Mahat, Mahat, Nagaralas, which after six lay, but then the Nagaralas. If you just have a Ziba Maragachin, Bahamas, I hope last year, Ahonuka was with that Ilain, Skatosan like Skasra, Ulet Asrasos, billion dollar deficit, what you call it, our balance of payment problem, negative, but who do under Gadame, balance of payment, Manat Unit, the export minus. The, the import negative it means what? Negative means our export is very much compared to what we are really importing. Why not we are really exporting very much? What what rather in even what you are really in as well as that my Shenafi I hope can such with Gaeda. All these things are really dealing with improving the business operating environment. So there is no one model, but a very good example on this one. We can mention a number of successful countries. Business operating environment to the most and below. Um, and, hey, what you call it? Um, infrastructure, moon, moon, moon. The right person in the right position. This is a key message, please. Don't forget it. If you are really dealing with real business, yeah, or if you are really dealing with real concepts of improving the business operating environment, the most important intervention area is human resource. Capable on human resource. Capable on trade facilitators. Capable on international business negotiators. Yes, well, again. And Jesus, we have cadre on the same side. We have a lot of what I say. International business like capable on our own. That is really nonsense, by that is the major problem of Ethiopian import export problem. And I have a different number. I have. Lot of evidence in one. You can check the profile of those who are really operating on this one. Even those who are considered as importers and exporters, they do nothing, by the way. They simply enter into that one, except a few, I mean. There are still uh, uh, model business operators. Uh, so, so, one of the key issues in improving the business operating environment is assigning the right person in the right position and providing the right national assignment to the right institutional. Uh, responsibility. A very good example in this case is Denmark. You know, I know in Denmark uh, there are, but I'm top scorer Tamario Chemigabut, but trade facilitation is Those who are high scorers, high IQ, and they really there. Whether government, party, or whatever, they don't care. They are there simply to boost Denmark's national feasibility. Visibility in the international market. So uh, uh, the second one is Malatro. Trade facilitation is all. Think tank groups are. If you go to, for example, Turkey, more than 46 yeah, import export think tank groups are. Tar you can check it. Around 46 yeah, import export and facilitate in matter. How many really in our country? Getting your think tank group no. Ethiopian business uh, import export like Mengistan Sagzimitai. Can you tell me any any institution or any uh, advisory group that really works to support importers and exporters? Simply data is a galapto, we publish our group. So, Buzu Zila, Mr. Rusrao Chalus, Razi, Na, Kazakazia Kavila, but I'm Buzu Shashar Mikha Pachonagrochal. Turkey and Denmark are very good example for me, especially in assigning the right person in the right position. They will tell us, by the way, just give the, the, the trading for traders, for merchants, and just designing the JIT and other uh, production or global supply chain design system for the designers. Do we have those designers? Really, the, the, the important uh, positions or are, are they really occupied by these experts? No, I doubt this. I doubt this. So this is this is what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is few. That few is what? To improve that operating, business operating environment is the solution. Improving the overall business operating environment, but I will emphasize much on human resource and support think tank groups. That's what I'm saying. I think if you if anybody who wants to add on my lecture, please this is a master class, you can participate. I can unmute all of you. <laughs> Let's 
प्रस्तुत करेल उट Uh, on which were you disturbed you know on which concept uh, last 10 minutes is actually the question that was asked by mr getao uh, he, he asked me uh, how can we really improve our global supply chain system and then what example can you give us or what business model is really helpful to make our countries Uh, to boost or to improve ethiopia's global uh, supply chain system and my answer was really simple that simple answer is improving the overall business operating environment is a solution to really enhance ethiopia's or any country's global supply chain uh, system i mean the whole global chain and then i really emphasized much on human resource and then you can have hundreds of technology technological supplies and inputs by the way without human resource when i take human resource one assignment of the right person on the right uh, responsibility second even maintaining maintaining minimization of what minimization of what you call it uh, departure the, human, the number of staff in stability but am arif trade facilitation lies sir we never but am go was yono sawoj 3 amat 4 amat ay sir we leave it they leave it so there is high human resource instability i think geta is a good example on this one so what i'm saying is working much working much on the application of uh, principles that will help us improve business operating by by so business operating environment improving a business operating environment rasul yechala tilik concept no so chapter 6 lai bedem nayawalle na de example biye mosdacho hagaroch mannacho like turkey and denmark nacho yanda ando hager be trade facilitation zura ijik saffi yona ye think tank group allacho betam le bisari if they want to work on textile behind the screen hono misoru betam berkata exporteru Uh, value chain and identify market design by matter prototype develop pargo test by matter inji value chain ta takam bela trader un benagero he doesn't know he sum sara li hon aygebam bayzo selezi izi lai ye knowledge based international trade facilitation sara betam betam yasfelgar malalno yehen neber yalkut getaw kasamanya honum kalota thank you doctor thank you uh, for uh, your time and uh, sorry for other guys thank you no problem thank you very much again for your question any other question or doubt please let me know i can really explain here if you have any question not only now but also any time when you while you are reading if you get some concepts that are not clear for you please ask me i am also really appreciating some of the students they ask me by email and definitely i will I will I will tell them if you have any so we are so what you call it the online teaching learning process is not only just a screen based whenever you feel that something is not clear for you I am always ready to assist you online and then you can ask me so let's proceed to the fifth chapter I hope we have 30 minutes and we have to use the time efficiently so the fifth chapter is all about importing exporting and even counter trade why do we uh, do this because one of the simplest i mean probably the initial model of business to go for international is what you call is either importing or exporting and then you can have even you know, the concept of counter trade you, you can read it this why export normally we can begin with this i think this is a very simple question yeah uh, 
export ለምን እንደሆነ ይደረጋል አይ ኤክስፖርት እና ለዚህ እና ሳይ ሪሊ from inception point of view ልታውት ፈልጋለሁ ወደ 11 የሚሆኑ ትሬድ ቲዮሪስ ቻፕተር 1 ላይ ተናል አይ ሆፕ ዩ ሬድ ዘር አይ ዶንት ዋንት ቱ ስፔንድ ማች ኦን ዳት ዘ ቲዮሪ ኦፍ ትሬድ ላይክ ዘ ኢሹ ኦፍ ኮምፓራቲቭ አድቫንቴጅ ኤንድ ዘ ኮንሰፕት ኦፍ አብሶሉት አድቫንቴጅ እዚ ላይ በደም በለስ ብላችሁ እንድታዩ አድቫይዝ አረጋችኋለሁ in any case exporting is a way it says it's a way to what it's a way to increase i'm sorry it's a way to increase market size and profits i mean why 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 countries go for export definitely is a question of business it is a question of interest you know they have some sort of interest or business on that that's mainly related to improving market size or generally enhancing sales volume especially with the emergence of some important trade barriers under the pressure of wto as a emergence of low low trade barriers like unlike what has been seen in the previous 50 or 60 years and then the arrival of some regional economic blocks and the agreements such as the european union such as the north atlantic free trade association we call it the nafta like in ethiopia ecowas i don't know in africa how many of them how many of the african leaders really use their regional blocks i am not sure but i know that in the case of european union nafta and many other cian like the southeast asian trade network nazi hulu makasatacho really it really boosts the opportunity to uh, companies to go international especially those bigger firms usually proactively seek new export opportunities but many small firms export uh, reactively normally when you see larger firms they spend much on the exploration of advantages they spend somehow significant amount of their budget for international export or international market assessment uh, whereas smaller firms just from their capacity they simply respond when some advantage really comes so this is a reality however this larger or smaller businesses they are highly intimidated by the complexities of exporting exporting is not a simple task by the right number of complexities that uh that uh, either large or smaller firms are really uh, investing so i think you can you can you can see from that advantage so being large and small has its own uh uh say or its own level of intimidity to go even internationally so why exports one to identify as i said it market opportunities second to how to raise this challenge second even to do these to do these the limitations you know to uh to meet or to resolve the limitation or the challenges that are associated to these foreign exchange risk so so that's by exporting they can really generate better foreign exchange or hard currency even to search or to navigate import and export financing a number of international uh, governments i mean a number of governments across the world they really support this international trade they also support importers as well as exporters in order to reap that benefit or exploit that support they may really go for international plus even the domestic business may be saturated saturation of domestic businesses compared to the level of production companies are aspiring to do so they may go for international so saturation or some available challenges in the domestic business that the other thing is even it may create some more advantages like further market identification transactions in complex financing processes from these companies can really learn a lot and even com- currency conversion sometimes maybe a, a challenge so which may push in governments to be more conservative for their national reserve so in this case companies may choose to sell abroad and really generate the hard currency 
to fulfill the so there is a concept which is called counter trade uh, counter trade is uh, one issue that we can really um, discuss in this chapter counter trade is like a, a barter like agreement which facilitates the trade of goods and services for other goods and services where they cannot be traded for money. There are a lot of cases that we cannot exchange for money. But as developing countries, it is because we are what? We are not price makers, rather we are price recipients. Sometimes some governments may be conservative, okay. Uh, we don't have that much hard currency. Why don't we exchange products? This is what we call it really a counter trade. We need to think some sort of counter trade so that our balance of trade deficit can be really minimized. By the way, I will really encourage you to, to, to think how much counter trade be a solution for Ethiopia. Can counter trade be a solution for Ethiopia, for instance? Assume we can export huge amount of uh, uh, oil crops to China. And then from China, we are importing, let's say, a number of nations. So in, the, in between, we are really exchanging through dollar, let's say. Why not, for example, we may bring some nations from China. Instead of that, we can really give some sort of system rather than dealing with hard currency. This really is helpful to improve the bargaining power of the importer country like Ethiopia to have a better advantage in international trade. So is there a policy of counter trade or like that? I am urging you, I am giving you a reading assignment on this. What are the possible areas of counter trade in Ethiopia? And then what are the possible areas and then what, where is the stage of counter trade in the context of Ethiopia? Can you start? So the concept is like this, rather than using hard currency as a middle exchange, this is like a barter like. Because of the, the imbalance of power in determining international market price, they are saying that, for example, the, the, the advancing countries, they say that market is free, let the market decide the price. In history, in, as far as I know, there is no time that market has decided price, by the way. It is power, it is na national government status that can really decide for price. So I am I'm, I'm really telling you. For example, if you go for Europe, they have what you call it the ABA policy. The ABA policy, I raised it even I think one day before, uh, maybe in the beginning of the class. ABA means everything but arms policy means Developing countries can bring everything except arms, like bomb or clash, whatever. Our market is freer. However, most of the products that are being sold in European countries are highly subsidized, starting from the production value chain. For example, Sunday, Baoropa, Gabi, fertilizer cost subsidy, subsidy no. milk like that, honey production, everything is highly subsidized. The Ethiopian non-subsidized production system, and they are going to use the highly subsidized price competing matter. This is, you know what I mean? Even if they say free, the whole value chain is not free. That's why these days countries are really pushing the concept of counter trade. Normally, this concept is emerged in 1960s when Russia and the communist states of Eastern European are the non-convertible currencies. But um, uh, it's going to like in Estonia, like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Serbia, like Montenegro, like Croatia. They, they were uh, 1960s, but I'm on the Madagascar currency. Uh, for example, like, uh, like uh, geothermal energy or some fuel energy from Russia, some alcohols probably from Russia, and then some other uh, edible items like agricultural products from Eastern Europe in the Zemir, but 
So this can be considered as a solution that tries to stabilize. And then it's really grow popularly in the 1980s, especially among many developing nations that lack the foreign exchange reserves, because since they don't have foreign exchange reserve, they may not be able to fund their um, import. So rather they really uh, 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 work for um, counter trade. Plus, it has also a notable and a remarkable increase, especially in 1997, following Asian financial crisis. So counter trade is a very good uh, uh, emerging, uh, if, uh, if it's an emerging uh, uh, important concept that those countries who are in national uh, reserve deficit can, can implement it. So what are really the different forms of counter trade? We can have like bartering is one, counter purchase is one, offsetting is a third one, a buyback is the other one, and a switch trading is the other. Please leave them there really self-explanatory and it's not like magic to consult. You can read them, you can read them, and then if you have question, you can ask them anytime, ask me anytime. However, counter trade has some disadvantage. as well as advantage. In the beginning, what are the advantages of counter trade? Counter trade is normally advisable because it gives companies a way to finance an export deal when others are not really available. It's really helpful to, find, it's really, uh, helpful to get finance for its export deal. Second, it gives a firm somehow a better competitive advantage of a firm that is unwilling to enter into a counter trade argument. Then counter trade arrangements may be required by governments of a country to which a firm is exporting goods or services. And definitely it is one of the mechanisms through which governments can extend their hand to support international trade. So that's one. However, counter trade also limitations. Uh, one is one of the limitations of counter trade is it may involve the exchange of an, an, an unusable or poor quality goods that the firm cannot dispose of profitability. So this, this is really a, one of the things. Uh, therefore, if we know this is a limitation, probably product testing and sampling of importable items could be a solution. The second uh, disadvantage is counter trade also requires firms or companies to establish an in-house trading department to handle uh, counter deals. It means yeah, if they may have some sort of counter deals, then definitely um, they can, uh, they have to manage it. If they want to manage it, they are forced to open uh, a separate department. Opening a separate department to handle it definitely it has its own uh, uh, costs, okay? Management, co management, managerial costs, and then conservation uh, costs. Therefore, uh, we have to really be very careful and then we have to really examine the possibilities and pros and cons of counter trade to Ethiopia. As I told you uh, before, is there any possible legal and institutional framework or backup related to counter trade? Please read in the count. Counter trade in Batamalakata, Agarachin Alat, Burgut, Yenig Dugulas, Tayo, Nig, Namin, Namin, Milagarala, please read it. And then this may be one of one of the questions that may ask you. So, uh, plus it's also an opportunity to be considered for your master thesis, or for instance, and then uh, opening eyes on other issues. And then you can have a comparative assessment between a certain Ethiopia and a certain other country who are really conducting a counter trade. How much are we ready counter trade? Uh, what can we get and what can we scan us in a kind of counter trade area or get a car in a man in one which products check Marak Chilala Chumadno. I can I can mention you one, but that's uh, not really advisable to uh, raise it here. <clears throat> so when you see generally trade, I mean export, export has its own initial uh, suggested advantage, we call it promises and generally limitations. The greatest promise of exporting is that 
large revenue, generation of large revenue, and then arrival at a better uh, profit opportunities from foreign markets and all, I think you can really get it. So expanding market size, and then even uh, mass or production of, if we really expanding market size, then we will be in a position to produce in mass, producing in mass, again, it will help us also lowering uh, investment costs, I mean lowering uh, unit costs, because unit cost is uh, fixed cost plus variable cost divided by the total unit. So if we are really producing much, the fixed cost will be distributed to larger amount of uh, units produced. So if a certain fixed thing is divided to larger number, definitely it will be lower. So lower unit cost will be achieved. However, farmers that do not export uh, usually lose uh, on significant opportunities for growth and cost reduction. Therefore, uh, there is uh, uh, an important need for farmers to become more proactive and even seeking export opportunities before uh, deciding into to deciding to uh, produce or uh, run at uh, local level. So, what are the common pitfalls or limitations that we are really looking from being challenged or failed? international witnesses the first pitfall is what you call it poor market analysis without adequate market analysis companies enter into international trade i mean for exporting so please please try to make adequate market analysis market market is a really issue without market there is no revenue by the way if there is no revenue nothing if you are a manager or a business operator so please really understand what market is. Market analysis is a very, very important step before uh, really deciding to export. Market analysis really has some uh, stages and some parameters like products. When you talk about market, the first thing I think, you know, the four piece or the five piece, last time as I said it, product analysis. Really, what type of product is really required by the country of our intended destination. Product, product features, product durability, product quality, product standardization. All these things should be very, very, very important. They should be considered. Last time in the watch, our customer was simply tangible uh, item of the service product bundle in the concept emerging. It's not only the tangible product, it's not only on the on the physical item, rather, how that product is produced, because consumers these days are becoming aware and the global consumer movement is really coming. Consumers are becoming responsible on each break that they are really taking. sip of coffee, traditional buyers, we need to be responsible in the mentality globally happen in the other way. So let's see, you have a number of products which are sound, you have a number of products, your production certificate, your whole value chain certificate, if you go to Europe, for example. Uh, if you go, uh, let's say, Tesco market, uh, some coffee that may come from Costa Rica and another coffee from Addis or Ethiopia, as I tell you, the price may be even double. But they can pay for that because they, they are sure that how the whole value chain of that coffee is being produced. They want to be responsible, for example, for species conservation. They want to be responsible for environmental matters. They want to, they want to be responsible for the, for the human rights component of supplying markets to products. Even some of the buyers, they, don't, they know that, for example, how much is a daily labor payment for a laborer who really spent in a coffee garden? It's because it is When you talk about market, the first market component is product. Product and the big part of the undergraduate, now the cinema number on the product features, the packaging which just have. The concept of product in the mind of global consumers is really evolving. Please, please don't go with the old mind that Product means simply tangible. People are really highly conscious of 
what the product, uh, how the product, not only what, but how that product arrived there. He product in date in Yagar Matta, in date Alfono, any corruption incidents are the way. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm the Yaku, which was but Hunetan. Bazi in Batamalakata, global product certification rasu, and the Ligia marketing in three point Yolano. Company which product machine service must start with Jasayon. Yemimar to product touching, the Nesa product touch, certify the certification standard amount at certify Mara product touch it amaratu, Bazi 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 Agua Nobulo Mautat. It's really becoming a very important uh, international business uh, advisor. And most of these certifiers are by the way, I don't know, probably it's maybe by chance, most of these are by the it Italian companies. So uh, if you go uh, forest products that are coming from Latin America or West Africa, you cannot really easily bring it to Europe. You have to pass a number of checkpoints for any of the forest product that really, but still this one is also full of corruptions, by the way, I can tell you. Yeah, the Cote d'Ivoire, the chocolate input, Belgium, you know, chocolate simmer, but I'm checking the ethical product standards and input product system. So when you say market product, the second analysis is price analysis. How much is affordable? How much is the price? When you talk about price, indirectly, we are talking about cost from here to Djibouti or whatever, whatever you know. Price. And the, the third P is what? Promotion. What type of promotion or marketing communication style? And the fourth one is placing what which one is the best way of distribution placing so all this market analysis should be well done if it's not well done definitely that will be a pitfall and many of the exporters are in fail i tell you make a major cut business which is a major reason for the failure of export exporting companies is because of poor market analysis and overestimation in their hope the second reason is poor understanding of competitive conditions in the work in the in the in the foreign markets. They don't have adequate understanding. So adequate understanding of the competitive conditions. So how do you do that? Are you going to uh, recruit or um, uh, employ an independent researcher in that country? There are many options. I tell you, the one that I tell you last time, the Global Age website. So there are a number of databases that you can understand how the competition looks like. It's not only the, the current competition, but also the trend, how that competition is really proceeding is important. The third reason behind <clears throat> the third pitfall of exporting is that failure to customize the product offering to the needs of foreign customers with the same product mentality that we are really telling in the domestic market, we may really consider the international market that way. So, Customization. Customizing means you need to really adapt the product to different countries. You may have a Coca-Cola, let's say in Ethiopia, and Coca-Cola in India. Most of the Indian Coca-Cola is much sugary, so you need to adapt it. So depending on the the tests and preferences of uh, foreign customers, lack of an effective distribution system. I mean, logistic system is one. Purely executed promotional campaigns the type of marketing communication that you can have, and then problems of securing financing. For example, export finance is really one of the challenges that current day Japan exporters are still facing, so exporting financing as well. So common pitfalls are, then how do we really, what are the <clears throat> common pitfalls? You can really, Improving export performance is a key question. It's not only for Ethiopia, it is a global question. Please bear in mind that almost all countries are really debating on this and they are really exerting their, um, their effort to the maximum um, possible stage on improving export performance. How can we improve export performance is a global question. Improving export performance. Can you mention the steps managers can take to improve businesses or uh, companies' export performance? So, what's important in this case is really one: before thinking for 
And enhancing export, we have to bear in mind that there are some pitfalls and understanding the pitfalls and then not to commit them is a first stage. The second one is even enhancing information source for exporters. Exporters, even to increase their knowledge of foreign market opportunities. And they uh, business teaching with the experience, a minimum of bands by you will summon to exporters, here as a forum, a lot of by sector. Banamla image Yaragalu Nagar of Mudan Nacho meet, but I'm by yes a bands, but only some mundus, the Yanan exporter, refreshing trainer at trade training center. Kafalaga Matus, that Kafalaga online news button at Alanabatam, even enhancing the knowledge of foreign. And uh, uh, for cases, for example, to teach even such international uh, business courses, the first person to be invited is not the professor of international business. The first person to invite it for such practical lectures is one of the best export performer. If you really appoint me this, if you know the best, the best export performer in Ethiopia, definitely we can invite him to, if he is willing or she is willing in our uh, uh, Zooming lecture, and definitely we can incorporate that. So what I'm saying is, there are really much, much knowledge of they have a number of uh, supports uh, that can be done. This could be done through what? One, it can be <coughs> state support. There are ministers of trade industry. Uh, the support can come to this one, Minister of Trade Industry. There are a number of, even in Ethiopia, but I'm through a uh, and it is supporting, I think, in, probably it's because of uh, the limitation of capacity or capacity limitation. <coughs> this are Minister of Trade and Industry. To look at you, no trade and industry like you make a make a map so which ras at you. Many are knowledge is in the case at your ras mint in the middle of the world. My you will get a service of it. Trade and industry like facilitate our gallery, Leon H. Menehi, reverse moon are the best. Um, the area of intelligent, you know, listen to the watch, my comments, Alabach is unlike many African countries. The other thing is it could be done through export management companies. There are a number of companies, we call them EMCs in America, Ethiopia Town, export management company. Can you tell me any export management company that can really support exporters, assist exporters? I mean, there are some government ports. These are what they call independent companies, even subsidized, subsidized by countries, subsidized by governments, so that their task is really not to see any failed exporter. So that's really the uh, there, and of course, this one has own uh, pros and cons. Having EMC have its own pros and cons. Even exporting strategies, and then adequate or nice exporting strategies. The state support like Germany is a very good example, by the way, in terms of installing a nice export support, and one of the world's most successful exporting nation, by the way, Germany. It has. Even a number of trade associations, government agencies, and commercial banks, they gather information each other, they help each other, they share, they share information, and they have a common data pooling or data center, and finally, even uh, uh, supporting small firms to identify even good business opportunities. Japan, meeting with Balnagara, Japan, Ministry of International Trade and Industrial, then, which is always on the loop of export opportunities, export opportunity, which is like in a guide which I learned by the way, in these countries. There are independent agencies, opportunities, opportunities, Japan and Germany are really very nice on, on this regard. Like in addition, many Japanese firms have affiliated in some way with the Sogo Shogam, the Sogo Shosham, Sogo Shosham, Japan's greater trading house in Nigeria. The Sogo Shosha have offices all over the world. Kayandandu Embassy Attaji Honu, Sogo Shosha Ocha. Sogo Shosha Malat, Embassy, Japan Embassy Alabba. Even a Japan Embassy which has a Japan University which has collaborated in Mera Gutapamat Bamuru, Hindu Nemisa Rustafu Charvacho. So they really, Zaka Min export and Dalla, Uragaracho, report Maraki Alabba. This is a Japanese tradition. We call it the Sogo Shosha tradition. 
The other thing is uh, utilizing export management companies, but I'm busy busy like. I'm a number of departments like uh, um, two ways of export assignments. Layer again, which one is one. They start export operation and they simply show the way. And the ones in the export American company which can figure out to Boalando, the Mohanet Rasa Chomedu Mehir Kachalo Alai to Lachua. At least Yala Mudachua Rasa to export Yaradu. Even they can have also some startup services and then some responsibility for selling abroad. Even Yemeshet product on the Kabulo, Sheto, Revenun, the domestic companies in Mount Atmanatan. Export strategy like the Tambuzu examples are like the uh, example. Strategy was important is um, careful uh, choice of the strategy is really very very uh, important. There are a number of strategies or guidelines that help us to improve their odds of success, so that that will be also be again documented. The Sale, the three company me below the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, but Zira Betam, it our strategy alone like. It really makes for more than 40,000 products, including tapes, not papers, medical products, but I'm going to go to company. And then more than 60% of SRAMs revenue are generated outside of USA. So that's it. More than 60% generated in America, USA, which in data are going to be So the grand strategy for this company is like. Uh, uh, it uses its export to establish an initial presence. Export America simply for initial presence in a foreign market, you know? and then only building a foreign production facilities. Kazawala, Rezargo, Production, Brasu, Zemes, Kedipata, Katamia, Lamalatan. Please, if you go for page 404 on the case material, on the textbook that I shared you, page 404. Exporting strategy at Sir M. Milal Sulaman Bamoko. As I regularly and repeatedly say, this course is highly case based course. We don't want to remember handouts, and I don't want to flood you with thousands of pages of handouts. So, rather, uh, we have to be very critical on things what we are saying, and all things should be very supported. So, support with real world cases. As the course is international, our examples are fully international. Like, Shreem strategy can be taken by the principle like the FIDO principle. FIDO principle is first in, then defeat others. This is what we call it the first video. First in, just we can be like in terms of export as a Sierra Then this is what we call it the FIDO principle. That's why it sells more than 60% of its products outside of the domestic country. It means what gain an advantage over other exporters by getting into market the first and learn about that countries before others do. The second principle of 3M company is make a little, sell a little. Make a little, sell a little means entering on a small scale with a very modest investment and pushing one basic product and then really uh, working on that one. For example, Russia in Hungary market, many Russian companies in the Hungarian markets are like this. Make a little, say a little. Once Srem believes, anyway, you can read it. The third principle is hire local employees to sell the firm's products. By any means, Srem really provides much emphasis to hire, to hire what? To hire international uh, employees. As I said, it's human resource play a different role within the conduct of international business. So 3M really emphasizes on the hiring and training of uh, uh, lo local staffs. <clears throat> the other principle it can have, I hope it can have, you can read it. Export financing is one option. How export financing really is helpful, again, discuss on the basic steps involved in export financing in Ethiopia. For example, you can assume that you are an Ethiopian exporter uh, to your customer in Germany. In the export finance, there are a number of steps. The first step is many steps to the lack of trust. The two steps are export and finance. Export, export financing, please, the macro level financing in that out. Export financing in this term means, or in this sense means, you send the product and then you are getting the price to it for this. Uh, Perspective. But I'm lazy. Assume you are an exporter to Ethiopia 
and you have a bank account in Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, and your customer is in, let's say, in uh, Munich or in Munich or in Munich, or it can be whatever type of German town or city. And then definitely you don't know him physically. He asks you the product. So what? How do you really exchange the product? This is this is the next stage that we will see it on Saturday. Please read uh, all the issues that I want to uh, I wanted to emphasize on the cases that I have discussed in the lecture. I think well done for today. So see you on Saturday on exports and import financing. We are on slide 50. If you have any question, doubt or suggestion, please, you are most welcome. Question, please. I'm a general comment. No, because that's okay. Okay. Klaus, what I'm just saying about the look at which I've been to better look. I'm a second alone image. Uh, yeah, okay. Assignment to line. I'm a cathosan. You just got a mega girl number. Okay. Yeah, major Mario individual assignment to like with a set of title of chart. After no review, Narago was Bernazat of Pikosh Lambeva. Theoretical Munimona and two point Mazagaja Tamil. A critical review Salamil article review being understand their Article as a Toman level, sorry. Ashanafik them. Okay, okay. Leona Bessemus Lalga Balino. Great. Umbrella Nega, I only live. Ashanavi Dalai, Dom Odezam Casfalaga, Imagine Mara of the Yakin, they're going to review our village way. So Saidim Sateko in a Paratamaro chin to Rasa. You are a seventh of Kayamus for Santon Eleven and Nantan, Yalachu Basichu, Gavanya, Gimacho Chachu Malako, Stona Lachu, Gimacho Chachu, Guzunagaral, and I understand the situation, by the way. The Hin Maratgan. Article summary, article summary, assignment to now. It says conduct conduct a systematic critical review in a middle. Systematic you have to be systematic. Critical review of what? On one of the following issues here. Global business and corporate social responsibility and issue. It's the role of government in international business. No, we have the more international business strategy. No, we have global supply chain management. Can you and do the Tamari? Can you and do the critically review? Systematic it about what we can ask you know, system has what an input. Process out of that. In put out to no objective allo, introduction allo, uh, but objective allo. But not a yaka, but on systematic level, introduction like and systematic mass for women. No question raised out of that. Like, you know, I'm sorry, kind of about global business and supply for a social responsibility. See, sir, I'm Mr. Akon, image of Marawa. It was an Arakam's article finish, never, never better than as I like in the problem statement. It was an introduction. Like, is that as I you the objective of this systematic review is this one because a critical as well at the moment. Is that a yemi balloon which are not a cover in the bachoon? Really, question are put in the tunnel put in negger question to other girl. Yeah, yeah, critical as well. Critical mass for another government. No. Review Mutara Gutunaga, like Bowlet was all starting to lodge in the support of Tada Gut Major Shalai, Yarasa to save him from the recommendation like that. But that I'm in Kalam Salin in Kavata, the Union Kavata Yukun, critical review rules with Tara Gutara Gutunaga. Systematic as far as a girl for systematic as far as I you, audio uh, chart material at introduction or objective in or method in or roughly madam. Maximum page limit is 10 page limit because that you really grab 25 percent of the meters that you post that you are really near the mark. I'm sorry, not the natural day. How mark is that? I'm not very little, but actually, Tamari Milo and no A plus A charge. Say again, again, you know, surround a Milo. A now no even I'm saying that in a Milo. And the Zandatun and Nantan Quatun goes to the Nachin, you are too responsible. 
بقى مازال عايز روب وقت يا كتا دكتور ماشي اصل هون يا سردوت نجر جبتوني انا عنده اجن ريفيو اه هون دوكيومنت نو ريفيو ميتر ريدرج ان شاء الله وي مصاف نو وي تصافه نجر نو معناته ريفيو كاله سمثينج اكزيستس اه يا سمثينج اكزيست ريسيرش نو مون يالبت وي ثيوريتيكال ماتيريال نو وي سم ارتيكل نو ميتلو اي يا جماعه يفلغاتو بتتشال متن غير من اللالتاتش لا ايتاتشوت كونه بتتشال متن هي زملو يا غازيتا يا منام فيسبوك ونام نغسايو كونكريت يونه لمثالي ببلشد يون ارتيكلز يونو طرو اغريد ثانكيو بتماريوچ لاي كونفيدنس سلالاي نو اني زم بي ارتيكل ساتچي ارتيكل وسد مهلس اينت نغر اني ايمچي اني اي بي ماي ستودنتس ذات ماي ستودنتس كان ريلي زي كان تشوز باي ذا فيرست ستيب ذا فيرست ثينغ دس ميلاچو ممرت مشال الالباچو باي يو ار ماسترز ستودنت اني ذات اوبجا ساو يو كان ريلي بزي جلوبال بزنس ان كوربوريت سوشيال ريسبونسابيلتي ميل اند 4 5 ارتيكلوچ توسدونا ከዛው ውስጥ እነኛ የሚያጠነጥኑበት ስለ አንድ ነገር ማወቅ ይችላል ለምሳሌ ሮል ኦፍ ቢዝነስ ኢቲክስ በኮርፖሬት ሶሻል ሪስፖንሲቢሊቲስ ይሁንች አንድ ነገር ይዛችሁ በዛች ላይ ክሪቲካል ሪቪው ማድረግ ክሪቲሳይዝም እየተረጋችሁ ቴንክ ዩ ስክሪፕት ፎር አይ ሆፕ ቢ ግልጽ ነው የግሩፑ ግልጽ ነው የባኔ በኩል ግልጽ ነው ሌሎች ጥያቄ ካላችሁ አላቅ ግን ሰዎች ይጠይቋል ሰማው ግሩፕ ላይ ጥያቄ ሌላ ሌላ ጥያቄ ያለው ካለ ፕሊስ ዩ ካን ሬዝ ዩር ሃንድ ያቄ እሺ አመዘግናለሁ አሁን እኔ መጀመሪያ እየገባኝ ኮንሰፕቱ ላይ የተመርቱ ካራቱ ታይተሎች ላይ ኮንሰፕቱ ላይ ነው እንተነ ጠይቀን ራሳችን ክሪቲካል ሪቪው እንደዛ ነው ይባል እየገባኝና ሶ አሁን አርቲክል ሪቪው ሞን ይችላል ብለህናል አኔ ግን ኮንሰፕቱ ትምርቱ ላይ ነው የመሰለኝ ስለዚህ ጌታው አሁንም ሚስ አንደርስታንድ አታርግ ለምሳሌ የመጀመረው ኮርፖሬት ሶሻል ሪስፖንሲቢሊቲ ነው አይደለ ለምሳሌ ኮርፖሬት ሶሻል ሪስፖንሲቢሊቲ ኢዝ ኤ ኮንሰፕት ነው ኮንሰፕቱን ትይዙና አንድ አርቲክል ሳይሆን በዛ ኮንሰፕት ላይ አንድ አይነት አባባል የለም ባይዘ ኮርፖሬት ሶሻል ሪስፖንሲቢሊቲ ምንድነው ራሱ በሚለው ላይ ወይም ደግሞ ስታንዳርዶቹ ምንድነው በሚሉ ላይ አንድ አርቲክል ወጣነኩ አንድ ነገር ነው ይዛችሁ የምትሄዱት ሁለት ሶስት ስታዩ ግን ከብዙ አንግል ክሪቲካሊ ሪቪው ታረጋታላችሁ ኦኬ መጻፍ ላይ እናገኘው አለ መጻፍ ላይ እናገኘው መጻፍ ላይ መጻፍ ላይ ብቻ አባይ ዘይ ክሪቲካል ሚሎን እንዳትራሳ መጻፍ ላይ ሪቪው ካረጥ ላይክ ሃንድ አውት ወይም ናም ነው ፕሮዲውስ የምታረጋግልኝ እኔ ግን ኤክስፔክት ማድረገው ተማ ከተማሪዎች ይሄ ምንድነው ክሪቲካል ሪቪው ኦፍ ኮርስ ካንድ መጽሐፍ ትጀምርና ይሄ ነገር ግን በነከለ ያባባል በሚሉት ነገር በዚህ በዚህ መንገድ ይሰራል በዚህ በዚህ መንገድ አይሰራም የተለያየ መልኩ ይሁን በዛ ፐርስፔክቲቭ ነው እሺ እሺ አመሰግናለሁ ይቀርታ እሺ ባላ ምንም ችግር የለም ችግር የለም ታንክ ዩ ሌላ 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 ብለርድ የሆነ ቪዥን ካለ እኔ እኔ uh please anything if you, if i want to assist thank you very much thank well you. then for today happy to see you again next friday thank you thank you sir thank you thank, thank you, you doctor. Doctor. see you tomorrow sir thank you see you tomorrow thank you sir ለዩነት መፍጠር አላማችን ነው ዓለም አቀፍ ተወዳዳሪ መሆን አለባችሁ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ጥራትና ደረጃውን የተጠበቀ ስልጠና በመስጠት ብቁ ዜጋ ያፈራ ነው በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ መስተንግዶ በቲኬቲንግና ሪዘርቬሽን በሆቴልና ቱሪዝም ሙያዎች አስልጠናን ተወዳዳሪና አድርጎታለን ኮሌጃችን ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር ዓለም አቀፍ እውቅና ያለው ስልጠና እየሰጠ ይገኛል በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ መስተንግዶ የምንሰጣቸው ስልጠና ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪዬሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉ እና አለ አድራሻ ከጎላጉል ታወር 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስደው መንገድ ላይ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እድ ኩባንያ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ህልሞን እሁን ያለ